Celeb Savant is a career retrospective type interview focusing on singers, actors and industry experts. Join Barrett Edelstein now as he dives into the entertainment world. Twenty twenty four introduces Call Me L, a new name in pop with a free spirited darker edge. Call Me L emerges from a small town ready to challenge the pop scene with a blend of haunting melodies, slick beats, and sharp lyrics. Backed by Electric Pineapple Media and recognized by BBC Introducing, Call Me L's approach to music mixes her vintage influences with contemporary themes, creating a sound that's both familiar and fresh. On stage, Call Me Al's presence is undeniable, combining vulnerability with a compelling confidence that captivates the audiences. Her performances are addictive and inspiring with an enticing nostalgic feel, all brought together by her music's authentic power to connect. This year, fans can expect to see her performing at various venues across the UK and USA, each show an opportunity to experience the raw, unfiltered essence of their artistry. Up next on Slapsvant, we've got Call Me Al. Where do we find you in the world and how are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for asking. And I am currently in Watford, uh, just outside of London. I don't know if you know how that is. <laughs> Where does the name Call Me L come from? How was that chosen? That's a great question. Uh, it's a bit of a funny one. Uh, so my name is actually Abby Louise. Um, so we're having a back and forth with my mum discussion. What on earth can I call myself? And she said, you know, what about just Al? And I was like, that's great. Anyway, basically, I went to Spotify to uh, to upload just as Al. And it turns out <laughs> I'm a bit narcissistic here. I thought I might be the only name of Al, but obviously not. <laughs> it's about a million. <laughs> so I was like, oh, OK, there's definitely too many. So um, then... One of my favourite Paul Simon songs uh, is obviously the song Call Me Out. My dad used to play it on full blast in the house when I was younger. So I literally was just on Spotify about to uh, upload something and was just like, oh, Call Me Out. That was that. It's <laughs> such, a, <laughs> such a flippant decision. <laughs> so I was actually wondering if it was at all that Paul Simon song had anything to uh, behind it. So, yeah, when you said that, that made me laugh. <laughs> For sure. Okay. Yeah, it's a great song. <laughs> it's a brilliant song, yes. Let's go all the way back to the very beginning. At what age did you think, cool, you want to be in this music world or entertainment space? And how did that journey accumulate to where we are today? Well, I was singing since I could speak. I was always a creative kid, um, artistic in, in every single way. And then I was about, I think, six. And uh, I have a, an older sister and she has a best friend. Um, and they they were like, come on, let's do some little performances. And and I started to sing a song and they would just stood there with their mouths open like, oh, my God, she can sing. <laughs> and I was like, huh? And they were like, do it again. Do it for mum and dad. <laughs> So then I was just pushed around the family going, go do it again, do it again. And uh, it was quite funny. So I then I already had a love for being creative for theatre and things like that, but it sort of blossomed. I've spent many years going back and forth, trying to get a sort of in, in some way into the industry and finding my my feet there. Went to music university in London, um, managed to, uh, I say escape, I absolutely love where I came from, a small town in, in Derbyshire, but um, there wasn't, for me, there wasn't much going on there in terms of opportunity. So uh, came to London, came to the big city to try and find some opportunities and it, it was great. But again, it was just a, it was just a lot going on. I had a band previously called Abby mm. and the Roses. Sadly, we split up during covid and then it brings me to this current project, which um, it's a passion project. I absolutely love music. It's always going to be in my life. But sadly, th- due to life, <laughs> it just so happens that I've been pushed every which way. But uh, always come back to music. So here I am again. <laughs> so what is studied at music university? What like what subjects? I'm sure it's not just you guys. Like I picture in my brain, like that movie Fame or that series Fame, where everyone's in the cafeteria singing and dancing and doing their thing. I'm sure it's not like that, or is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes it was a bit like that. I actually studied uh, music business in specific, and then specifically vocals within that. So 
I would do elements of vocal performance, but then we were also taught a lot about the business, um, which was really helpful for someone coming from the middle of a field. I grew up on a farm, so I had no idea what music was or how to break into the industry. Um, So, yeah, sometimes there were just impromptu uh, glee-like sessions of performance in the hallways, but mostly it was a lot of uh, moody, angsty teenagers (laughs) walking around sort of uh, thinking that they were the next big thing. (laughs) (laughs) From zero to three to four minutes in creating a song. Is it easy every time? What motivates it? What invigorates it? Let's dive into your creative brain. That's a good question. Well, I I am constantly writing. Um, my car is my safe space. Um, whenever I'm driving somewhere, that's where I come up with my ideas. I have hundreds of thousands of voice notes. Um, so that's yeah. sort of where I'll blossom an idea. Honestly, I have no storage on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts from there if if there's something I like or I'm inspired by I'll I'll kind of save a melody and I always have to write from the heart so if there's a subject field that I think is kind of cool similarly I can write uh, just some lines down it doesn't even have to be in any form of uh, you know poetry or song but and then sort of f- find something coherent within that but um, then I'll go to Toby who is my sort of partner in crime in this project at the moment and he's a producer and great writer and composer. Um, and I'll be like, Toby, I've got all these strange ideas. And he's like, oh, yeah, sounds like you. And uh, <laughs> let's make them sound coherent. And uh, and then, yeah, we'll sort of, I like to personify, I'll draw a person in my book. Um, and then I, I, within that sort of, we'll do a mind map off and, and and be like, what are they feeling? What what kind of conversations are they having? Where What do they look like? What What's their day like? So that helps me to write quite specifically um and emotionally and then toby in all of his magic will uh help me bring that to fruition and that usually entails us writing a banger really quickly and then spending days and months fixing and twiddling and sometimes you think oh it was perfect when you started (laughs) but that's it (laughs) when you guys are have done that why do you feel that you have to tweak it and fiddle it, fiddle with it for like weeks or months and not take what you've got at that moment? That is a question I ask myself every day, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that's <laughs> interesting you ask that. Um, it's funny because I, I love the songs and I love where they end up, but it's often that I go back and I personally listen to the demos um, because there's just something really raw about them. I guess there's something in having a perfect um, polished piece it's great obviously for radio purposes you want to make sure that this this is up to standard with the songs that are out there at the moment that's a really important thing but then there is that like rawness and that beautiful you know like we've got a recording of the first um, of this love song that I wrote and I listened to it all the time it was done on an iPhone it was we were singing it too quick my vocals weren't great toby was playing the guitar but there's something so beautiful about it and whenever i play it to people they just cry and i think how nice is that maybe one day i'll release some of these uh <laughs> un- untouched <laughs> gems <laughs> you reference mind map and drawing creating a picture for you to see so i'm not sure if you're aware of nlp so nlp is neurolinguistic programming so that's the way people process information now each of us have our dominant one a secondary and tertiary. Something kicks into us as a child, which makes us think, okay, we this is our p- way we pr- process information. So you've got three of them. So visual people, they create pictures of the information they're seeing. Auditory people, it's around the words, understanding the words and sentences. Kinesthetic people, and uh, that word again, kinesthetic is the emotion, body language, tone of voice and energy. So focusing specifically on music, because it might be in other spaces slightly different, but focusing specifically on music. When you hear music of your own or others, are you creating a picture, hearing the words or feeling the emotion? Every bit of me wants to say all three. I think my visual is very strong. I've always been a very visual person. Um, I have to close my eyes to listen. Uh, because there's a picture in my head so yeah I'd say visual it's funny though I feel like most musicians would probably be like more uh, more of their audio but I don't know I think for me it's just yeah visual I, I, I see 
see a picture yeah. and I know how to create it. But there is definitely that element of, of emotion. Exactly. If, if it doesn't feel right, then. Yeah. I know, I know so I'd say I, potentially your dominant will be visual and then yeah. the secondary. So because I originally picked that up because you already said you draw a picture, you draw a mind map. And that's very yeah. much a visual person's uh, yeah. trait, if you want to call it that, or the way they carry through. But now when you listen to music by other artists, are you able to just relax and listen? Or is your creative technical brain unpacking what they are performing? Uh, I It depends on the song. <laughs> okay. If it's something I really love, um, uh, then uh, then I can do both. I can switch off, but I can also be critical and, and look at the technical side of it. But it really does depend on the setting. I like to think that I do just switch off and listen to music, but there's always an element of, oh, that's nice. How can I incorporate that into mine? Or, oh, what's that sound? Or <laughs> <laughs> how is this making me feel? Or, <laughs> <laughs> or what yeah, pictures are giving me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or hold on a minute. I want to be like that. How can I draw this? <laughs> <laughs> so I love me a CD. I still purchase a budget for my CDs every month. For me, it's an energy exchange to you guys to say thank you for all the hard work you're doing. I love the pictures, the booklet, the journey of getting it, choosing it, unpacking it, the excitement of unwrapping it. I'm not sure if you're aware that CDs, vinyls, and cassettes are making a massive comeback. In the UK alone last year, 5.9 million vinyls were sold, the biggest since 1990. CDs are again on an upward, upward trajectory, not going downwards. And cassettes, can you believe, are also making a small imprint. And then we've got these digital platforms that people listen and consume music on. What is your observation and perceptions of where the industry is at and what are your preferences? I I love the development in this digital age. I think it's great um, in terms of accessibility, especially to people that might not have had access to music or or creating music. Brilliant. Love all of that. I'm old fashioned. Um, I'm very much, uh, I like you. I like to have a hard copy. I like to, I've, I've draw everything as you know, I pen and paper, I read books. Yes. <laughs> physical same. books. Uh, I like it. There's something, I, I don't know why it makes me feel sort of more connected to the earth, I guess. I don't know what it is. Um, but I, I think there's definitely, an, like you say, this shift. I don't know if it's because we're in such a world where it, constantly we're being thrown, you know, new AI, this new technology, everything's being, you know, pushed to us. There's always hmm. a new phone or a new microphone or new something coming out. Maybe there's an element of us who are just sort of wanting to go back to the basics of, oh, it is all very complicated. Is there not just a nice CD I can put on and have a nice day where I can have a cup of tea? <laughs> I think that. I don't know. Maybe that's a shift that's coming, but I'd like that. I, I listen to vinyl. I don't listen all the time. It's not always the case, but if I do, I put it on. Uh, you know, I've got a nice drink in hand, some incense going, and I'm thinking, mm. this is an experience. This is yes, not just exactly. me listening. To, yeah, not just listening to something in the background as I'm doing another task. I'm enjoying this as an experience. Exactly. And you know, last year, because I was living overseas, I was actually living in London a bit. Then I came back from lockdown, came back to South Africa. And I wanted to get a, a new CD player last year. And everyone was like, eh, you won't be able to find a CD player. There's no CD players anywhere. And I actually went, so there's a platform in South Africa called Take A Lot, where you, it's like a delivery, like an Amazon sort of thing. So I went online and I was like, okay, I'm hoping that there'll be one good quality one. And there were hundreds of options. In fact, I had to narrow it down and narrow it down again. And what was interesting for me is that I listen, so I do have my playlists that I have for, because I'm a spinning instructor. So I've got my playlists on Spotify. So I prep and listen to that. And the sound quality and difference on the same machine of listening to something from Spotify compared to listening to actual CD is like mind blowing. It's for me, it's like I'm in a stadium, <laughs> massive stadium with beautiful sound compared to the digital is like very muted and dilated and diluted it's very flat <laughs> yes i get this sometimes i listen to this to stuff in the studio and then i'll go to i'll be so excited i'll leave and i'll play it on my phone i'm like oh what's happened <laughs> <laughs> but it's you're right it is just flattened there's definitely a magic lost i guess but i know there's great ways to listen i do think within that if there's some 
beautiful connection in the song it can still transcend that flatness exactly. however yeah <laughs> that's not always yeah it doesn't always it's not always the case <laughs> what are your short terms and long terms goals so what's happening in the next few months what's what's being released are you allowed to say <laughs> all those type of things <laughs> Yes, um, it's very exciting. So I've I've been a bit of a uh, well, I've, I I wanted to release earlier this year. Sadly, um, it's just being able to get all the music ready in time just wasn't feasible. Um, but now we're nearly there. <laughs> I'm gonna say touch wood, even though there's no wood around me right now. <laughs> so I'm just gonna hope. <laughs> Um, let, yeah, let's I'm say it will happen. Let's just months. say it will happen. Yes, it, let's it say it's happen. happening. I'm. It's, we're here's the date <laughs> in your mind. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in terms of actual solid dates, I don't have any. But in the next um, couple of months, I have got two songs ready. I have then got another four that are almost ready and I plan to release them staggered over the next um, year every couple or every three months so that's exciting I'm really looking forward to having music back out I'll hopefully be doing some shows I'm planning to go to the US I'm definitely doing a couple bits around the UK and London I'd love to go to Europe if anyone wants me (laughs) never been to Europe never done any performances there Uh, but yeah it's going to be busy in terms of song releases so I'm just going to see what that entails and 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 what happens next with that are these songs going to accumulate into a body of work of a full album or you're still just sort of testing it out I initially was going to release the singles you know I know that Right now, it's oh, it's this weird pressure of social media and um, algorithms that it's better to release singles and all this stuff, which uh, which I get. But um, if there's a consistency there and it feels as if they will work as like an EP or something, maybe I'll do do EPs. Um, I'd like to do if I did an album. I think I'd like to spend a few months specifically whereas these songs have sporadically come together over different okay. emotions and different mindsets whereas yeah. I think it'd be nice to sort of go on a journey with an album but there's definitely um consistencies within the project where I feel like there might be some little EPs but I think it would still be single releases because as you know <laughs> the algorithms <laughs> give us singles give us content every day please <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned this so what do you enjoy about performing live oh i do you know what it terrifies me as well it's funny oh, okay to say this absolutely petrifies me i i have serious stage fright um but i absolutely love when i'm on stage it's just the prep to get there connecting and actually being vulnerable i i I don't know why I love it so much because I'm terrified of it. But once I'm there, it feels so nice. It feels almost like a cathartic, like emotional. It's kind of selfish, to be honest. I'm not even there for, to perform for everyone else. <laughs> I feel like I need to get it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I guess that's what I love. Um, obviously, I love to see people um, connecting with my music. That is a big part of it. But often I'll cry and laugh and say silly things on stage. Um it's just a very vulnerable place for me to be that it terrifies me. But it is, as I said, yeah, it kind of feels necessary part of the creative process. How long it, pre to getting on stage are you in inverted commas terrified? So is it like a couple of hours, a whole day, a couple of weeks or a moment? If I'm honest with you right now, and I never said this to anybody from the second I confirm a show, I'm nervous. Okay. The run up to to it I'm always anxious nervous I suffer with anxiety a lot anyway I was previously medicated but I'm sort of weaning myself away yes. to try and um to find out who I am and see what I can deal with um, yeah, yeah but so that is so that's very complicated anyway because I'm just sort of dealing with my mental health as well as dealing with being petrified of being on stage which yes. I guess is kind of normal <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah I, there's there's always like two, I feel like I've got two personalities um one of me is really good at dealing with it all when it's just like, yeah, I've got this. I'm not nervous, which is the side I'd show to everyone. And then the vulnerable side, which I've just admitted to you. Which yes. Is, oh, I'm absolutely terrified and I'm scared <laughs> until the second I get on there and I sing. And then I'm like, oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> so I find this quite interesting. So what are your thoughts around? Because people see you on social media, they see you on stage and there's this whole concept of like, they know you because... 
they, you know, they believe or feel that they know you because they've seen you, they've seen you in the music videos and that. Have you ever had a situation of someone coming up to you after a show whenever like, and you don't know who they are because you've never really met them, but they are experiencing this feeling of, oh, well, I know you, you sort of should be my friend because I've seen you and been following you for all this time. Do you understand my question? <laughs> yes, I do completely. Yeah, I've I've had a couple instances like that. Um, I, it's funny because I, I, I think I'm very much, a, I say this, I'm a, an introvert, but a people person. So it it doesn't phase me because I think I do a lot of um, live streaming. So I try to contact, I try to connect with people as much as yeah. possible. So I think if someone was to come in that scenario, I would treat them as they would treat me, as if I know everything about them and would invite them to sit with me. And <laughs> I just think I don't, I don't like the disconnect within yes. that. So for me, I'd be like, oh, this is completely normal. This is just someone who I've been friends with online. Maybe I don't in, like interact with them, but yes. everything I put out is for you. So I'm glad that you feel a connection and you can now be my best friend. <laughs> 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 which is a bit strange i guess but i don't know <laughs> <laughs> okay so i love this game i know if i had to ask this question tomorrow in five minutes five years 20 years i know your answer will be different every time because there are millions of them mm -hmm. i'm not saying favorites i'm saying top of mind if you had to push play to five songs by other artists once we finish this conversation what would those five songs be and by whom okay great my first would be um I am going to struggle to choose, but pretty much any of the rumors Fleetwood Mac <laughs> songs. Okay. I, Rhiannon, Rhiannon. I love, there's something about that. It kind of, I, I feel like I'm Rhiannon. I feel like I'm the one she's singing about when she's singing. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that sounds fun. That sounds like me. <laughs> um, so that it's, is probably my, my top one. Um, right now I'm absolutely loving, um, Holly Humberstone she's from my local area actually she's a really cool artist I always sing her covers as well so I probably go with London is Lonely by Holly I think she's a great up-and-coming UK artist um uh, so yeah my third I guess it, it's mood wise I really yeah I love Amy in certain situations if I'm sort of chilling out on a Sunday maybe pop on on some vinyl that's mm. great love Amy or love all of Amy's songs um really then leon bridges uh texas sun that is it seems to be the theme tune to my life i absolutely love that song i play it pretty much all day every day <laughs> uh it's funny that i say that because i don't realize that i actually do until you get your spotify wrapped and you're like oh hold on a minute i've listened to this song three thousand <laughs> times <laughs> oh yeah i have and then my fifth um Oh, this is difficult one. It's a really difficult question, actually. I know. <laughs> That's why I love it. Yeah, yeah. Now I feel <laughs> everyone, like I should have prepared. Everyone Ow. struggles with it. But it's just like, <laughs> let the fifth one just be like a top of mind one that just flies through. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm just thinking I've given you my top. Oh, oh, oh this is, should have been my up with my number two, actually. Uh, probably Van Morrison. Um, I really love... I love all of the Astral Weeks album, but me and my dad used to play Brian Out Girl to me, which is lovely. Um, but I also really like Caravan. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm just giving you artists that I love here. No, no, these, no that's perfect. These never it's perfect. Change. It's perfect. There's no rules. And the, you're not going to get marked. <laughs> you I failed do get the a test. B or C, you got an A. Plus. <laughs> yes. I didn't fail. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> yes. So the, the podcast is listened to throughout the world. So as a final message, what would you like to say? I would just like to send a message to anybody who feels um, like they don't have an opportunity to do whatever it is, not even just music. I think sometimes where you're from, who you are, uh, what you look like and um, how people treat you can affect what you think you deserve in life. And I really don't want that to be something that stops someone from going for their dreams because it nearly stopped me. And I'm really glad that I was um, persistent and had big dreams so stick at it thank you for listening to this episode of celeb savant please follow barrett on tiktok instagram youtube and facebook at celeb savant that's c-e-l-e-b-s-a-v-a-n-t -E